waiting mine. I wonder this night, if Jesus Christ were to glance at you or he were to glance at me, would he see someone who is committed to the cause of Jesus Christ? Would he see someone tonight who was surrendered or might he see someone who was spiritually out of shape? Someone who's been unwilling to pay the price. Someone who's been unwilling to count the cost. Someone who has been unwilling to take up their cross to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. What would he say about you and what would he say about me? Now I think about what Paul said in Philippians 3, 7 and 8. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Verse 8, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. In essence, Paul said, I have counted everything but loss for Jesus and it means nothing to me. Yes. And let me remind you tonight of what Philippians 2, 5 says. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be made equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation and he took upon the form of a servant and he was made in the likeness of men. Wherefore, being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death of the cross. Now, the Bible tells us that at the name of Jesus Christ, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In other words, Philippians tells us tonight that Jesus Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice. That Jesus Christ counted the cost. That when God the Father made the plan clear of what was necessary and what was needed for your forgiveness and mine, Jesus did not back down. And that's why God has given him a name that's above every other name. That's why this very night, those of you in hotels, those of you all over the United States, the day will come when you will look the Son of God, Jesus Christ, face to face. Your eyes will meet his. And whether you believe it or not, my friend, it does not change the fact that the truth is you will get on your knees and you will confess that he is the Son of the living God. So the Bible makes it clear that Paul paid a price. The Bible makes it clear tonight that Jesus Christ paid a price. And in this passage of Scripture, Jesus Christ lays out for us what true discipleship very, really means. And let me go over it quickly. Number one, Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, it's going to cost you relationships. Remember what 1 Corinthians 16, 22 says? It says, if any man loves not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. In other words, the Bible says, if a man does not love Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. And remember Luke 10, 27, the Bible tells us you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. In other words, the Bible tells us tonight that the greatest command that's what is expected of you and me more than anything else is for us to love Jesus Christ. And we must love him more than anything else. We must love him more than anybody else. Remember Matthew 10, 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. In other words, the Bible makes it clear tonight that above any other relationship, above any other person, a man or a woman must love Jesus Christ first and foremost. I left back home a beautiful wife and three children, one of which is four months of age. I love my family dearly. I believe I could honestly say tonight that without question, I would give my life for anyone in my family. But let me say, as important as my wife and my kids are, my God, Jesus Christ, must be first and foremost in my life. Jesus said, it's going to cost you relationships. Hey, let me be honest with you tonight. If you get serious about following Jesus Christ, there are going to be people that do not like you. There are going to be people that think you're a little bit strange, that you're a little bit off the hook, that you're a little bit weird. But yet Jesus says, we've got to lay it all aside. Secondly, and I must move quickly. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, there is going to be a sacrifice involved. Remember Romans 12, 1 and 2. I urge you, I beseech you, brothers, and view of the mercy of Christ, that you offer your body as a living sacrifice. Let me remind you of the heroes of the faith. Matthew was speared to the ground and beheaded. 
Mark was drunk to the, drugged to the streets of Alexandria, then put in a dungeon and set on fire. Luke was hung from an olive tree. Simon was tortured and crucified upside down. Judas was beat to death with sticks and clubs. Thomas was thrown into a furnace and then pierced with a javelin. James was beheaded. And then James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, we find out that what happened to James was he was pushed off the temple roof. When he fell off that roof, he got up on broken legs and echoed the words of his half-brother, Jesus Christ, and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But yet, as he prayed for them, they literally came up to him with sticks and clubs and beat him to death. Hey, let me ask you tonight, what has following Jesus Christ cost you? What price have you paid to follow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Because what I find out is those things that cost us the most are those things that mean the most to us. I read a statement that really impacted my life. It says the life of a man is justified and measured by his sacrifice. I wonder tonight what sacrifice have we made for the cross? What price have we paid for the cross? Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, he said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. There's a misconception about what taking your cross means. We think because we went to church on Sunday when it was raining, we've taken up our cross. Oh, we think because we have a spouse that's hard to get along with that we've taken up our cross. My friend, that's not taking up your cross. When Jesus talked about taking up your cross, it's those things that's that willingness to die. It's that willingness to give up things for the cause of Jesus Christ. I wonder tonight, what is our sacrifice? What are we willing to lay down at the altar? What sacrifice are we willing to make? Thirdly, Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, the price of discipleship, if you want to know what it really means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, he said, you must assess the cost. He said, no king goes to war unless he first sits down and evaluates whether he has enough troops to finish the job. I think about Luke 9, 62. It says, no man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And yet we see many in this day and time, they say they're following Jesus and they love him. And six months later, the FBI can't find him. <laughs> and Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, he says, I want you to count the cost. You know, I recently got in a trip from uh, being out of state. I got in, took my wife shopping. We went to the local Dillard's and we were looking through all the things. You know, the first thing I noticed about my wife, every time she found something that she liked and that she wanted, the very first thing she did was she rolled over the price tag to see what it was going to cost her. You see, my friend, Jesus says this, before you decide to follow me, there's a rolling over the price tag. There's a time of evaluation and seeing if you are willing to pay the price of what it takes to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Assess the price, assess the cost. The Bible tells us in Philippians 1, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Many people don't teach that anymore. You know, the Bible said in John 16, Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. That's right. That's correct. I want to tell you tonight, you give your life to Christ, you get serious about living for God. My friend, let me be honest with you, you are tough days ahead. But let me say, there is someone who walks with you that's closer than a brother. Who's there for you? Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, there's the price of relationships. There's the price of sacrifice. There's the price of assessment. And then lastly, he said this, if you're going to follow me, it's going to cost you. And I want you to hear me very clearly.